Hi there, I'd like to welcome you to our Let's Go on Safari presentation. If you're attending it live, thank you so much. And if you're attending online, we really thank you for taking your time, I know your time is valuable, to stop and listen to what we have to say about a safari. We're trying to uh, educate everyone. Um, the purpose of our, our presentations is to educate everyone about the experience so that you can make an informed decision about what it is that you'd like to do and if this is something that you think would match um, your um, desires to go on safari. My name is Safari K, and I've been doing this now since two th about 2005. Our business started in 2008 and we have been taking groups on safari ever since. It started as a, um, as a trip that I took because I was quite depressed from some things that had happened in my life. So the, the company actually started from adversity in my life. And the how, why, when, and where is a result of that particular time in my life. I had, in a very short um, in a very short way, let me just tell you, I had lost my mom and my two brothers and I was in a pretty bad traffic accident where I was hit by a drunk driver many years ago. And all of it happened within um, months of each other and perhaps uh, over four years, all of these things just took its toll on me and I was quite depressed. And so in um, Sometime in 20, 2006, I took a trip to Tanzania, Africa, because I needed to get away to reform my life and decide how I was going to handle the new normal in my life. And what I found out from that trip was it really did change my life. It, it helped um, put me on a, a different path and to live life with a purpose rather than uh, live life thinking, uh, why me, why me, and why all of this happened. So um, I had been working with the County of Los Angeles for 30 some odd years. And what I did was, uh, because I was on leave from there, from the accident and from all of the things that had been going on, um, I actually took a trip. I took uh, a trip and traveled around 12 different nations in Africa after that trip to Tanzania to see really what I wanted to do with my life and how I can incorporate travel and uh, a safari experience in my life. I didn't know at the time how I would do it or what I would do. I didn't know any about whether I was going to retire. I had I just had no clue at the time. But after doing all of that and taking that first trip to Tanzania, I realized that this is something that I can actually show everyone because the effect that it had on me while I was in Africa was a very, very... Uh, eye-opening and awakening for me and I knew that it could not just be me I knew that other people had to feel this way as well so I took a test group to Tanzania Africa and they had such a great time that I knew that I could make something from this so I did I retired from my job and I started my business destined to travel and this is how the how, the why, the when, and the where started back in 2000, initially in 2006, but officially in 2008. So today we offer private, personal, and custom safaris. It's a comprehensive experience. We visit a school that I support and have supported for quite some time now. Um, we visit local tribes. We, we talk to the people. We have a wildlife experience in the Serengeti and other parts of Africa and other parts of uh, Tanzania. So my business is actually located in Tanzania. So we have our own vehicles and our own drivers in Tanzania. So 90% of my trips are in Tanzania, although I do other trips as well outside of that. So uh, let me tell you a little bit about our safaris. We have a safari called a Make a Difference Safari. And it is operated, uh, that particular school that we visit is operated by Pete O'Neill, who is former Black Panther. And I read about him in the front on the front page of the Los Angeles Times back in 2000 and maybe 9 or 10. And um, I, it said that he lived in Tanzania. So I asked my driver if he would find him for me because I wanted to go visit him. And he did. He found him and I went to talk to him. From that first meeting, you know, it was a very, very quick meeting, but I told him I wanted to bring my groups 
to see him, to meet him, and to experience the kids that he had, and to have that experience on safari. And he's, he welcomed me back with open arms. You know, I was in quite a hurry on that, that day. I was actually on my way to the airport, but I told him I would be back. And two months later, I was back. I met his wife. Uh, I met all of the children. It was a great decision to actually start that because from there we did a make make a difference safari where we invited people uh, from the communities, different communities in the United States, to actually participate at the school to share their talents and skills with the children. And we've brought together computer scientists, scientists, um, uh, accountants, teachers, um, you name it. We've brought them together, and they've shared with the kids a talent that the kids may never ever get to see. So it's been a fantastic experience. That is only one part of the safari business. I do operate regular safaris too, but this make a difference has been so rewarding. And so many people say it's the highlight of the trip, meeting the kids, meeting Pete, meeting uh, Charlotte, and really experiencing these kids. Over the years, we've helped educate children. We've actually installed solar at the school. We've been responsible for bringing laptops and, and shoes and you name it, we've done it. And we continue to do it after every single safari. And it is really a very rewarding um, experience. In fact, this is Pete, and this was just in November. Working with him has changed my life change the direction of the safaris and the structure of how the safaris are, are actually done and actually changed his life as well. So it's, for me, it's been very rewarding. And this is one of our participants who's showing one of the children how to take pictures. You know, they don't, this is something that they don't have. They don't have the opportunities. So we tried to provide those opportunities. And he is a young man who is a black history historian and he shared some of the black history uh, events of, uh, of the U.S. with the children of Tanzania and the children of Tanzania shared with him as well some of the history of Tanzania. So it's a give and take. Wonderful. And we've been doing it ever since. And as I said, those who participate do say it's a highlight of the, of the trip. It is actually a less expensive part of the trip because the safari part uh, is usually three to four nights. And so it's a less cost, but a great experience. Uh, the gentleman on the left is my cousin. He actually lives in Tanzania now, and he's, he teaches computers to the children, and he actually um, does so many things to help the children. He's the one who's responsible for solar. The one in the middle is my, my nephew, who actually is responsible for um, starting some, pro he and his wife, starting some programs there that helped with the Make a Difference, and they continue to go every year, and they make a difference and they make a difference in the lives of the kids as well. And then the last gentleman is the one that you saw on the previous slide where he was showing photography to the children. So you can expect this safari to cost somewhere under $4,000. It depends upon how long the safari is um, and what, uh, how many nights at the school. So it's, it's different for every trip. So keep that in mind if you are the type of person who wants to make a difference, who wants to do some community type work. It is not missionary by any, any chance. It is not a mission trip. It is a safari, but it's called the Make a Difference Safari because that is, in fact, what you do. You make a difference in the lives of the children. So we operate safaris, regular safaris, typically in February, May, and November because these are great months. February is, is peak season because it's birthing and baby, but we still are able to get some pretty good prices there. It's not really that crowded. Um, in May is the green season, rainy, but great for safari. And November is the short rains, also great for safari. So, but not as often, we may do, we may do June and September. And if you're a private group, if you're bringing your own group, then we can do that at any time based upon what your needs are. So we are flexible, but we don't have cookie cutter uh, itineraries that operate every exactly every day or every month or every certain time of the year um, on specific dates. We kind of customize all of our trips for the seasons that we want it to work in. We bring together all ethnicities. They're all from the United States. Everybody speaks English, including our drivers. They are very well versed and are able to communicate with you in English. We have all age groups. But we do, uh, for children, we do recommend that we have other children on the trip because I, 
I don't like to mix adults and children together because you never know what those conversations are going to be. And so I, I need the parents to understand that sometimes if that does happen and other people on the trip as well, you know, how that could impact the difference in the safari. So I want to make sure that I, I do try to put children separately in a vehicle if that works for the trip. As I mentioned, all of our trips do a tribal and cultural visit where we visit a tribe and we talk to the people of the tribe and you'll just be amazed at how they live and get information from them. Our fleet is actually three now. They all have pop-up tops. They seat eight along with the driver and everyone has a window seat. Very comfortable, very comfortable. These are our drivers, our two drivers. We do have more drivers now. Paul on your left has uh, been with me the longest. He is a wildlife safari expert leader, and he's the leader of all of our, our drivers, and he is actually a guide. He's been in the business for about 25 plus years, and he worked for a major company, and that's how I met him. I used to book that company. And he's been with me the longest, and he actually, he and I coordinate the safaris together. He's a wildlife safari guide. He's not just a driver. I've been on safari with so many companies and many of them are just drivers. They know very little about the habitat and the animals, but Paul can tell you anything that you want to know. As well as Sam, who's been with me for about five years, he too is a wildlife safari guide and he actually knows uh, lots about the animals. So they're, they're happy to share their experiences and their knowledge with you. So the questions you might ask, I mean, if you take a guess, I'm sure that most of you will come up with the same question for number one. The very, very first question that comes out of people's mouth when you talk about Africa is, is it safe to go? Is it safe to go to Africa? Is it safe to go to Tanzania? Absolutely, it is safe. It is safer there, many people say, than being in the United States. People do not feel fearful. They think they might, but once they get there, it just dissipates. So is it safe to go to Africa and to Tanzania? To Tanzania, it most certainly is safe to go to Tanzania. I can't speak for every part of Africa because I don't do West Africa, I do East Africa. So I can say that Tanzania is the most stable country in East Africa. And so you don't have to worry. And of course, Tanzania is home to Mount Kilimanjaro, which is the tallest freestanding mountain in the world. And if you're lucky, you might get to see the top of it because most of the time it's shredded in clouds. So how safe are you really from the animals? That's another uh, safety feature, safe, safety factor that most people wonder, you know, are you really in danger? I mean, you see something like this cheetah. This cheetah is actually, uh, looks like he's ready to attack and chances are he, he is, but not at us. So you are safe from the animals, but if you see something like this, you know, you're, you might be a little bit apprehensive because this is a huge male lion and it's actually a young lion but huge in the sense that you know that this lion could kill you so when you see something like this you wonder how safe you are is he going to come to the car is he just going to sit there or what he's going to do and then all of a sudden you look at him and what happens he gets up and starts walking now he's walking alongside the car He's not paying any attention to you. He gets up and walks alongside the car, but he's not paying any attention to you. In fact, he's just going about his business. And it's just like you getting up off of a chair and walking from one room to the next. So, no, you're not really in danger there. Maybe even this. <laughs> Now you're not in danger of him pushing the car over or anything because he's not threatened, but you might be in danger from the mud slinging because they're not thinking about where they're slinging that mud. They're just slinging it because they're trying to cool off. So, so that could be a factor, but not, not from the elephant itself. Or this. <laughs> So now this cheetah is just walking along, just minding his own business, walking past the vehicle. And no, he's not thinking about you jumping in because animals see the vehicle as one large obstacle, maybe in their path. They're not going to tackle it, but if you stick your head out, put your feet out, put your arms out, put your camera out, 
you know, now you've changed the whole scenario and now they see something and they're not sure what. And so you don't want to put yourself in that situation and we certainly don't recommend it. So we always tell you to keep your hands inside of the car, keep your body inside of the car and you will be safe. Okay. Now, if you hear something like this, So this is a lion, if you haven't guessed by now, this is a lion call and you will hear this or you may hear this in the, in the night when you're in your tent or in your bungalow. They sound like they're very close, but they're usually quite a distance away. Lion uh, calls actually carry throughout the, the bush. Um, you're not in danger, but that lion is calling to his pride, his pride mates, you know, and you can't go out of the tent, but don't let it scare you because it's going to sound like it's right on your doorstep. And 99% of the time, it's quite far away. Now, there's sometimes lions walk through camp, but they don't bother you. They don't come to the tent. They don't try to knock it down. They're just walking through going from point A to point B, just the same way you would get up and walk from one room to the next room. Now, getting in the way of this would not be such a good idea because while you cannot see this, this lion is next to his supper. He had just taken down a zebra. And so you never ever want to get in the it's just like a dog eating. You don't want to put your hand, you know, in front of a dog while he's eating because he'll snap at you. That's his meal. You know, you, same thing with the lion. Of course, we don't get close to the lions. We don't get in their space. They may come to our space, but we don't drive to their space. Now, you may wonder about that hole in, a, in the center of his forehead. And that happened because that lion was trying to take down a wildebeest. And when in the course of that struggle, the wildebeest actually poked his horns through the lion's face. We thought the lion was going to die because there was so much blood. But here it is a couple of months later. And that lion is just as, as ferocious and as, as uh, strong as he was before he took down that wildebeest. So we also try to educate our guests about conservation and bring that to the forefront and make everyone aware about how important it is if this is on your bucket list to take it off of your bucket list and put it on your live list because the fierce urgency of now is that one elephant is killed every 15 minutes. In Rhino, over 1,250 were killed in 2017 alone. This is not something you want to put on your bucket list for even five years away, let alone 20 years away. Bucket list is a long-term uh, plan or an idea that you want to happen. But within that time period, lots will happen that you will not be able to see and the landscape will change drastically. So if you're not content about reading about elephants and a lion in a book, then I suggest you put it on your list for the next couple of years and don't wait even five years to make that happen. Many of the travel magazines are publishing things about what's going on, the changing nature of the safari experience. This is the vanishing Serengeti, Africa now, is to promote the fact that animal populations are declining. Throughout every Africa tr country where there's safaris, there's talk about building highways, building dams, um, changing the landscape. Um, Lots of countries in the Middle East are trying to drill for oil, for, for ex oil exploration, uranium, other uh, minerals that, that are found there. So in a few years, things will change drastically. So again, the fierce urgency of now is to put this on top of your live list. So where do you stay? In a tent? Of course you might stay in a tent. You're out in the bush. You're out where the animals live. So you will be staying in a tent, but that tent will not look like this. So you might think that something like that would scare you, and obviously it would scare me as well. 
but that's not the kind of tent you're staying in. You're staying in a room like this. This is a canvas tinted tent with a bedroom, a living area, and a bathroom. That's right, every tent inside has a bathroom. Most of them have indoor showers, but there are a few that have outdoor showers as well, but they all have facilities for you to use because you cannot go out of your tent at nighttime. If it is an outside shower, it is enclosed within the space that you're in. It is surrounded by a fence or, or a gate or something, and you're not just out there. So this is a tent to camp. So please don't say that you would never go to Africa because you don't want to stay in a tent. Because I guarantee you, the kinds of tents that you'll see in Africa are the kind of tents you will want to be in. This is actually a tent, too. This is a two-bedroom tent. There's a uh, room on either side. There's a spa. There's a, uh, a spa on the deck. There's a patio on the deck. Um, there's a living room. It's all self-contained. It is a beautiful, beautiful tent. You may stay in bungalows. This is a basic bungalow tent, but it does. it's comfortable. It's roomy. It's in the city. It serves the purpose. It actually allows us access to the places we need to be in that area. And you will be just as comfortable here as you will be in any five-star tent. The grounds are beautiful. These are the grounds of that particular property. It does have a swimming pool as well. These are the grounds of other properties. You'll see the landscaping is beautiful, well-maintained. This is another tented camp. Here's the toilet area, and that door leads out to the shower. So this is an outdoor shower. It has It is all enclosed. You have tree houses where you have to climb the stairs because this house was built within, they, it, they cannot destroy anything in Africa to build anything. So they have to build around it or they have to build through it. And in this case, the tree is still there on the outside. You can see the tree on the outside. This is actually the tree branch going through. And this is um, uh, a tree house. And this is the room in the tree house. Some other rooms have air conditioners, some have fans, some have both. This is a high-end tented camp. This is a very comfortable camp as well in the Serengeti. It's a tented camp. Sometimes you're at a cottage. This is actually called a farmhouse. It's a farm lodge. And they actually have a, a plantation there where they grow their own coffee, they grow their own food. It's a beautiful property. This is the surrounding areas. This is actually on the property. This is the pool that they have. This is your bedroom. It's not a tent, but it's very comfortable. This one has a bathtub and a shower. This is a bungalow, and this is the room. Some are traditional rooms, and they're, they can be quite expensive. This happens to be uh, the same place that celebrities will book. It's called Sangeeta, and many celebrities stay here because it's a private uh property. Only people who stay here can come here, can even come on the property. So it, it's a beautiful property, uh, very well maintained, obviously. Beautiful grounds and, be and lots of great wildlife and lots of great pools as well. And many of the properties, of course, have gift shops because they want you to shop there. For your shopping pleasure, they provide gift shops. And you can't forget your Tanzanite because Tanzanite is only mined in Tanzania. And I always tell everybody, if you really want to get something different, Tanzanite would be the thing to get. Because, And I'll take you places. I don't get any commission or anything from any of the places I take you. I take you to places that are reputable, that I feel are going to give you the best deal. And I know in the future, if you had a problem with it, if as long as I'm going back to Tanzania, I can help you with that problem. So this is... Uh, one of the places that we stop in, it's actually in town. So we also do, I mentioned the cultural tribal village, so we do the cultural <laughs> cultural experience. So now you've learned about the safety, you've learned about the accommodations, now what about the food? The food is great. 
it rivals any five-star restaurant that you could go to in the States or any place else in the world. Absolutely scrumptious. You'd, you'd be amazed at what they can cook out in the bush. They don't have a, they have a kitchen, but some of them just have a, a stove. But what they prepare is fantastic. You may eat out in the bush with the wildlife. There may be elephants walking by or there may be something else out there. Um, you are safe. And this is a great, in the morning, this was our breakfast. Just watching the animals in the background was just fantastic. And don't believe what you hear because a lot of people do tell me that their doctor or someone tells them if it's not peel boiled or I don't know what the other thing is, but I've heard them mention three different things. Don't eat it because it, it will create a problem with your stomach. I've actually never had anybody who had any issues, okay? These, this, most of their foods are fresh. A lot of them, they grow their own food and veggies. It's very good. Please don't believe that because you will miss out if you don't eat, if you wait to have something peeled, boiled, or whatever the other one it is. The food is delicious. The fruits and veg veggies are, are fresh. Your tummy will be very happy. The veggies, great. Different meals, again, they will rival any restaurant that you go to. And yes, even pizza. Personally for me, it's the best food that I've ever eaten because there's such a variety. And if you're vegan or vegetarian or gluten-free, they can accommodate that as well. Oh, if I didn't forget, if I didn't forget, I want to mention to you that sometimes we carry our food and sometimes they bring it to us when we're out in the bush and we can't get back to the property. Desserts, oh my God, to die for. I have to get off get up from the table because the desserts are so great. They they will make you want to eat even if you don't like something. And if you're celebrating an occasion, Hakuna Matata, they've got this. They know how to celebrate. And believe me, it will be a celebration. This happened to be my birthday. So if you add this experience to your live list and take it off of your bucket list, I have no doubt that it will be one of the best decisions that you've made. But you should go now before the landscape of Africa changes. So Tanzania, the safety, the accommodations, and the food. Check, check. And check. Now, there's one thing left, and these are the reasons that you go for the wildlife. So how is the wildlife? I'm going to let you decide because I'm going to show you a few slides and you can decide, you know, if this is something that you would be interested in that would intrigue you. Um, it's a national geographic, most people say it's a national geographic moment, that they feel like they're a national geographic because they're doing and seeing things that you see on national geographic. So the wildlife is the wildlife. Now, how close do you get? Is this close enough? You see the vehicle and you see the cheetah and you see their their takedown. So we were sitting there watching and we watched for the entire event from the takedown to the actual eating to the finishing. Now, you don't often see that. We were very, very fortunate to see that because I've seen many, many, many um, takedowns and kills, but you never see the full effect from the beginning to the end. This one we saw the full effect from the very beginning to the very end in about 15 minutes. We stayed there through the rain and everything watching them because it was just, it was exciting. I mean, I know for some people it might be like, ew, ew, I don't want to see that. But this is nature. I can't control what nature does and you you wouldn't want to. These are not animals that are being fed like at Safari Park or other, air, or other zoos. These are wild animals and you see whatever is going on in real time. Now this lion found his home, uh, found her home. She's actually a female lion, lioness, and looks like that was made for her. She's just cooling it. You know, she's not interested in hunting right now. She's just cooling it in the heat of the day. Now I know this might be a little morbid for some people, but this is what you may see or you may not see. I can't control nature. I can only take you out there and you have an opportunity to spend your 15 minutes, if that's what it takes for those cheetahs to eat that animal, you have a chance to spend that 15 minutes in nature, in your own National Geographic moment. You may or may not see it. You can turn your head if you like. 
but this is nature, folks. This is what you go to Africa to see. You don't know what you are going to see. You might just see these cheetahs. They might have just finished, or they might just be beginning, or they might be relaxing. You don't know. But this is that National Geographic moment that you want to take in because you will not see this anywhere else in the world. This is only something that happens in Africa. There are no other organized safaris where you can see the kinds of variety and the numbers that you can see in Africa. And as you can see, he's very well fed and he looks like he's been eating, right? So whether it's lions relaxing, doing what they do best because they sleep about 20 hours a day, or just hanging with the pride. So there's dinner behind him. What a breakfast. Just cooling it with the lions and the warthog and the zebras. That's what you get. So you never know, but that's a moment. You may see a dazzle of zebras. The collective term for zebras is a dazzle, so you may see this. So these are part of the migration. There are hundreds of zebras around. I've only captured just a patch of them. So when there's a migration, and this was during a February time frame, you may see hundreds and hundreds of zebras. Again, a National Geographic moment. The bird life can be very prolific. You can see all kinds of birds, different birds that you've never seen here, birds that you've never heard of. This is a cuckoo, an African cuckoo. I've seen birds that I've never heard of before, obviously. They're beautiful birds. These are some of my favorite The, the crown matches that, 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 that color. color. Yeah. yeah. There's, uh -huh. There's There's some some color. Color. This is this incredible to see that many. I think that's where I actually picked up so those are crown cranes, um, and I believe they're the national bird of Uganda, but not Tanzania, but you see them all over there. Uh, they're, they're beautiful. They're one of my favorites. And this is a gearnuck, and this, uh, this animal is built for standing, built for eating, standing up. And you see them in northern Serengeti, northern Tanzania, and in Kenya. Um, I think on one of my slides before I said northern California, I am from California but it's actually northern Tanzania where you see these and northern and part of Kenya. So you don't see them all over. They're called gear nucks. Again, kind of a morbid scene, but something that you definitely see uh, when there's uh, a takedown because you always have the storks and the vultures come in after that to clean up uh, along with the hyenas so again something that you always see when there is uh, when there is a, a kill and this is a vulture and this is a big kitty cat now this is a small little creature it's called it's a lizard but it's called an agama Lizard, very colorful. Good. Good. And very fast moving, of course. Now, you may see a Cape Buffalo. They can be intimidating because they just stare at you. But again, they, like most animals, will see this huge obstacle in front of them. So they're not, they're not going to attack, but they're dangerous animals, obviously. And again, you always keep your body, your hands, all parts of you inside of the vehicle. 
And there are places where we see lots and lots of monkeys or baboons. So we have to just be very careful. You always listen to your driver. We, you know, monkeys and baboons can be very unpredictable. Usually they don't bother you, but you know, if you have food in your hands or something, they don't hesitate to come take it out. So I always make sure that everybody knows, be careful, close the windows when you have monkeys around. This is a goliath heron and you see lots of water birds throughout Tanzania as well because there's there's areas where you have lakes and you have streams and you have even puddles you know and you'll see water birds and of course one of the big five is beautiful leopard that you might see on a tree on the ground but when you see a leopard because they're very elusive consider yourself very fortunate my groups have been very fortunate they've seen leopards on almost every trip, and it's been wonderful. And giraffes, you'll see lots and lots of giraffes. And of course, that was my driver talking about giraffes, about how how high the um, the giraffe is, and how how many feet the youngster falls from from the giraffe when the youngster is being born. Um, fascinating information that you find out. So many things that I found that I have found out since traveling to Africa um, and that I would love to share with you on safari. Another lizard. And when you, you see something like this, this is a Nile monitor lizard that actually crossed the road to get to from one side to the other. And he was on a mission. He was on a mission, he smelled something and it went straight to that tree trunk to find something underneath it. Now we didn't know what he was digging for, but it turned out to be a scorpion. So, you know, nature is always amazing. It's always amazing and it's always different. And just something as simple as this can actually fascinate you because you, it's, it's hard to conceive how this monitor lizard through that, that tongue can actually smell that scorpion and went straight to the scorpion. So great uh, white pelicans, <laughs> just like synchronized swimming, <laughs> just you know, it brings a, a laugh to you because when you're looking at it, you don't expect that. And then all of a sudden, they all go down at the same time. They all come up at the same time. Again, nature is fascinating. Many of the birds, as we talked about before, this is a guinea fowl. <laughs> this is a lilac breasted roller. Colors on this bird is fantastic. It is the national bird of Botswana, but you see them throughout uh, Kenya and Tanzania. Beautiful, beautiful birds. When they fly, they have a lilac breast, and that's where they get their name. And you could see that lilac flying through the bush in, in Serengeti or wherever you are. They're all over. And this is a superb starling. Superb starling. You will see them all over. Every time you go and you might have lunch out in the bush, they will be there. And of course, I don't have to tell you what this is. This is a, uh, it's called a Varro Eagle Owl. And um, very rare to see them. I don't see them very often. I've only seen maybe one or two during my entire 10, 15 years of travel to Tanzania, but, but they are there. Jackals. Wow. 
And seeing an elephant rub on this tree, that this very rough tree that now there's a smooth area. I mean, it's the rubbing tree and they're all coming over to rub and to itch, to scratch their itch and the little babies on the other side. It was just a fascinating moment. Um, and this trip, and you don't see this very often, but on this trip, we counted over 650 elephants on this trip surrounding the car. There was probably about a thousand, you know, but they were on all sides of the car, front, side, back. No, we weren't afraid. It was just a moment. Uh, if I ever felt like I was in a National Geographic moment, this would have been it. There were elephants doing everything from baby elephants, from elephants playing in the water, to teenagers fighting, to matriarchs, to uh, elephants in musk. Uh, just so many things going on on this particular day that yes, it was a moment for me that I have never had on safari being surrounded by that many elephants, knowing that they are endangered, and that knowing that these beautiful animals with these huge tusks are animals that will be hunted at some point, and we just pray that they will be safe. So this was a moment for me as well. Then during the season of uh, February, birthing and babies, you may, if you're fortunate, you may see a birth. Now this little baby was just born. We saw the baby being born and we saw, uh, unfortunately, we, didn't, we don't have all pictures because it was from a distance and as we got up close, this is what we saw. The mother still has the placenta attached and this baby has to be up and running in five minutes because as soon as that smell permeates through the bush, you'll have hyena, you'll have everything that will be of danger to this baby. Predators will be coming from every which way. So that baby has to be up and walking and ready to follow the mom, wherever that mom leads her, within five minutes after birth. We didn't have any problem with this one because this one was running in five minutes. You may see zebra fighting. It's mating, it's mating. Just on the right just on the right right on the... And again, in this scene, there were zebras mating on the side, there were zebras doing other things, there was young zebras. Just a scene, uh, a moment in time. Kids will be kids, no matter where they are, they're playful. this is nature. I had never actually seen elephants mating in all the years I've gone. Um, this is this is nature. You know, this is really um, a raw moment and it's quite interesting because, you know, elephants carry their babies uh, for 22 months. That is a long time. And when you, you, you know, when you're on National Geographic now, you Somebody might follow that elephant and 22 months later, you might see that, that baby being born. But we would have had a long wait. But this was fascinating. And this is the kind of roadblock I like.
You know that sign, that bumper sign that says, we break for babies? Well, we break for elephants. In fact, every animal, even the smallest dung beetle, has the right of way in Africa. Baby hyenas, they're so cute. Some say the hyena is one of the ugly five, but the baby hyenas, they are just so cute, so adorable. So now you've seen a little bit of the wildlife, you've seen the accommodations, you've learned about the safety, you've learned about the food. So now would you like to know about the cost? Actually, a safari is much more than you think. It does not have to be $10,000, though many of them are. $10,000, who can afford to pay $10,000 on a safari? And you know, the reality is that most people, when they go on one safari, they end up going back maybe once, maybe twice. I've had guests with me that have gone back four and five times. You know, $10,000 on every trip, that is a lot of money. And not everybody can afford to lay out that kind of money. But many companies do charge that. But I'm happy to say that with Destined to Travel, most of our safaris are half of that cost. So if you've traveled to Disney World recently or taken a trip to Hawaii or gone on a cruise, that doesn't include air, of course, because air is very unpredictable. But if you've gone on any of those trips, I'm sure that you've spent $5,000 or more because none of those trips are inclusive of your meals, Sometimes your drinks, your your excursions, your um, transfers, transfer transportation costs, all of that is added to a trip to Hawaii. It's even added to a trip to a cruise when you do cruise tours and all your drinks are not always included. Um, so you've spent that much or more per person on many trips besides a safari. So we try to make it so that it's very easy for you to to book a trip to Hawaii to I'm sorry to Tanzania because we know I've booked those other trips for many a year so I know what the cost is so I want to make it easy and affordable for everybody who wants to go to go and I'm gonna work with you to make that happen if you want to book two years in advance we can do that as well our mission is to change the focus of what people see and know about Africa. The only thing that you see in the news is negative. We want to show you the positive and there is plenty of positive to show you. So we will work with you to make that happen. And just so you don't think that this is a sales pitch or bait and switch that I'm gonna say it's $5,000 and then by the time you sign up it's $8,000. Forget about air though, you know, Let's take a look at a couple of other advertised trips. This is a company I've been on several times. There's nothing bad about the company. It's a great company. But look at the cost. Seven nights from $72.95 per person. The properties that they book on that one are comparable. I have a mission. I'm not a big company. And again, my mission is to show you what Tanzania is all about what you can experience in Tanzania what it's worth is $48.95 let's say under $5,000 if you travel with Destin to travel and I am going to be with you on most of those safaris I will only not be with you if I'm already on location and then I will meet you at the airport as you come in so look at that now seven nights from $72.95 as opposed to the nine night safari that I'm offering for under $5,000. You decide. Here's another one. Seven nights, May time frame, same one, $76.50. The single rate is $1,450. Again, my trip, still May, less than $5,000. $450 is the single supplement. Same time frame, comparable properties. Okay, so as I mentioned, I want to make it so that you can go on a trip of a lifetime. 
I don't want to make it so expensive that you're going to say you can't afford it. Now, you might say you can't afford $5,000, but if you sit down and you think about it and you know anything about travel, you will know that most places you go to, you're going to spend that, okay? You may only spend X amount of dollars for your air and hotel and book that trip to Hawaii or to, to, parts, to other parts, but you're going to eat, and normally food is not included. It's not included on every trip. It is included on some trips. But you have to think about what you're going to see and what the experience is going to be. So I want to make it doable. That's my mission. Make it doable. Show you something about Africa that you probably don't know, things that you don't expect, and make that trip of a lifetime really that trip of a lifetime. So we are sold out for 2018. We have trips coming up in 2019. February is actually off the charts right now because that space is booked already. April, we're sold out. September next year, we're sold out. We still have some space available in May, but that's going to sell out pretty quick. Um, we have the Make a Difference. Actually, that hasn't been updated, but that's actually sold out as well. Um, so really what we have is that window of opportunity between May 1st and May 10th, 2019, and we have uh, June and November. Those are the trips that we have and then we'll be working into 2020. So, ladies and gentlemen, as I mentioned, take Africa off of your bucket list, put it on your live list, and I hope that I have answered your questions about safety, about where you stay, about what you eat, about how much it costs, and what this experience will be like. I hope I covered all of that for you. But if I haven't, and there are questions that I haven't answered, please feel free to email me, safarikafrica at gmail.com. Would love to talk to you. Would love for you to go on safari. And remember, make it sooner rather than later. Paul and I and all of our other drivers, we're waiting for you. So we hope that you'll join us in 2019. And thank you very much for sharing your time with us today, for taking your valuable moments to listen to more about a safari. And we hope that we've helped you make a, an informed decision about whether this experience is for you or not. And we hope that it is, and we hope you see you soon. We hope to see you soon on Safari in Tanzania. Safari K signing out.